a lot of my um, friends that I used to go out with back in the day who we used to hang out with back in Dawson Round or Dawson Way, a lot of them have moved out. Some of the people have moved, yeah, some of the people have moved to Berlin, some people have moved to kind of places like Munich and Dortmund. But um, most of them are in Berlin for the most part, so that's pretty good to go and see them and just hang out, have some good times, reminisce and catch up. And then, of course, just make some new friends, in it? Because if there ever there was a place where you could go and, and essentially reinvent yourself, because I think people say a lot about American universities, right? Or American colleges, that kids will go to an American college and they'll essentially, like, reinvent themselves, like, um, create a new persona for themselves. Imagine if you're, like, a dork in high school and you finally go to college, you can kind of, you know, um, find a new social group, maybe um, find people that are as weird as you or, quote-unquote, who are a bigger, much bigger losers than you to kind of band together and make this little um, click. And um, you can probably do that quite well in Berlin, too, because it's probably the only place in Europe that's got a hipster culture but also has an ability to kind of invite everyone in which is quite weird because usually when it's a hipstery and clicky it can get a bit hard to kind of break in and to kind of make friends but for some reason it kind of works really well there right there's groups of anarchists there's groups of punks there's skateboarders there's fashion people writers artists musicians djs event program event promoters like all you know just grifters there's all the all types you can meet there who you can kind of you know meet your kind of tribe and become the person that you've always wanted to be so if ever there's a place to escape reinvent yourself rewrite history that's the place to go so if you want just to go and meet new friends it's probably somewhere i'd advise to go to as well you can easily go there on your own like i, I go there mostly on my own most of the time anyway and then i meet up with my friends whilst i'm there and link up with some you know some new friends that i kind of meet along the way which is always quite nice and yeah great trip um i flew out on the what on this friday after no, i flew, flew out on a friday i was meant to fly out friday after work but then i decided to take the holiday off because i didn't want to you know have that kind of last minute rush where you're just trying to rush you're trying to leave work on time because i've always had that bad luck where whenever i book a holiday with the friday um no whenever i put the holiday with the what, what, was, what was the was that was the plan no what, what was the plan no the, the plan was to leave work after friday and fly out to berlin so whenever i have that it always happens to me that um i always happen to have like last minute.com deadlines i have to meet and all this other stuff comes up out of the woodwork people start emailing you and then you're like ah and you can't leave on time and if ever there was a time in an airport if ever there was a time not to leave on time where you might get punished really hard is when you go into an airport you know the late fees of booking in and all that stuff it's not it's not it's not worth it so i thought you know what let me just take the friday off i took that day off and then um i decided to fly out on the what, what flight did i get i think i got the like the 145 flight so which was quite nice i didn't have to i didn't have to like rush out of my house at like four in the morning to get the early flight which i think is quite overrated because i think if you it depends what time you will sleep if you end up sleeping quite early on the day the day before you can't possibly have a full day when you land at new location but i always find it if i just sleep my normal time like 10 or 9 i'm still quite tired because i'm waking up at like 4 in the morning then i'm getting ready then i've got that stress of trying to get to the airport on time you get to the airport on time you're still t- t- tired from being on a coach you know getting transported onto the airport finding your way to the gate all that sort of stuff and by the time you land anyway you're knackered you want to go sleep again so you don't really get the most out of the day even though you don't go to sleep and you just truck on through you don't really get the most out of the day so i feel as if like the best way to do it is to really to do the friday afternoon flight that i got land there at about what 4 p.m 5 p.m and then you've got the whole evening to kind of enjoy yourself so i just did that steps as usual wake up went to stand said i um, got on a flight pretty easily and was in berlin quicker than i could say boop, boop, boop. um then i ended up staying in an um, area called neuklin so i went to this, this i think the street was called like trip Trepper Stower Strauss or something like that. Um, it was a really nice area, right in the middle of everything and quite away from everything too. That was quite cool. Um, of course, booked everything from Airbnb. Really simple to do. I'm at the stage in life now where I can't really do the whole shared accommodation thing unless I'm with other people. So I tend to kind of get my own little apartment I can just stay in. Usually I have a little one bed, um, little flat thing that I can just stay in and just kind of have my own little time and, you know, walk around naked and play music really loud and just, you know, just do the damn thing, innit? So I did that. Um, that was pretty fun and then friday consisted of just kind of you know decompressing meeting some friends at this pub called the dorf hanging out there having some beers and then obviously the saturday was the plan was to go to a few parties um, go to the same heads which i ended up going to and also going to this place called copy which was like this weird anarchist sort of building let me try and get up here on the screen for you to go check out it was a really cool night it was actually loads of punk music loads of loads of um berlinist anarchist around hanging around it's, again it's a venue that i'd never really heard of prior but it was fucking incredible it's this weird industrial building 
um, that they kind of uh, use. That I'm, that I'm assuming it's, it's used as a squat for the most part in like the usual day to day, but then they do also do parties, I think, once a year. And I was lucky enough to be told about it uh, beforehand. And yeah, I went over and it was just, it was absolutely banging, man. Honestly, really, really banging time. Um, it was quite near, it's weird because it was a little bit, a little bit near kind of Kreuzberg, Mitte in a way, right? So it was really in the city center, which is quite strange because you usually associate these sort of buildings with like a wedding or, you know, other outskirts of Berlin, but it was right in the city center. So it wasn't too far from like Bergheim, wherever you can walk across the bridge to Bergheim quite quickly. But yeah, I really enjoyed it, man. Great, great experience. Loads of great bands there. It was a real big throwback to see all like punks in there and anarchists and stuff. People don't, you don't normally see hanging around, um, people just don't normally see in society in it like as you know people always say subcultures have died but i think berlin is probably one of the rare places where you go to and maybe la too oddly enough like la you still find like you know rockers and punk rockers and you know um what they call them hair metal band guys who are still trying to hold into their past glories you see that a lot in la you don't really see that stuff around the uk for the most part you might see the other person here and there in camden you know who kind of is but they look a little bit like cos they look at like the cosplaying a little bit right it's like cosplay tourism but they kind of dress up as like a punk with a massive mohawk and their studded boots. But you don't really think they're actually about that life. I don't know. I just feel as if like they're just there to kind of get money from tourists. But, you know, it's a hustle, wherever it may be. But the guys over here, they feel like they're the real deal holy field. So I went to go see that. It was a pretty cool experience. Went there on the most of the Saturday. Spent my time in there hanging around with people, playing some pool, playing some foosball, drinking some beers and just being a bit of a lad. Then I ended up leaving there and then heading my way straight over to Bergheim to go and see i think by the time i got there i saw nazira nazira and i'm going to say um after that was who was it sounds nazira soundstream uh oh let me get let me just get a list up actually i'll get a list up but bergheim was amazing um i arrived at the bergheim at what time i'm gonna say i arrived there on a saturday morning about no sorry sunday morning around 5 a.m i think i left copy right about 5 a.m had to queue up for about 20 minutes if that there was quite a few british people in the queue so big up them i'd love to see the british lads hanging around having some fun um let me go see the program that <laughs> oh jesus christ this new uh flyer is going to cause some problems i think for some of the people who are a bit woke on twitter but hold on let me just get this flyer up quickly so i can show you where i went um i'm sure it was the zero one but time i come up it must have been the zero so i missed the finest white ease i didn't get i didn't get time to go see that because i'm obviously hanging out with my friends at that time but the saturday i saw boris um i saw devious one um i saw but yeah so when i got there i'm gonna get the time up on here so you guys can see when i arrived at the berghain that was just when tim and finished and zero was starting at the main room really cool great set for the most part um it was a little bit empty than i remember it being the past couple of times i've been now i'm not sure if this is due to the coronavirus or just in general because it's that time of the month people are saving up to go to festival seasons is coming up very soon um maybe the lineup wasn't as tasty some people would have liked it's not the it's not like um this lineup isn't although it's great for the heads like you know like people like me and you who kind of you know appreciate the music and stuff i think if you're more of a techno tourist and you want to see the big big names maybe it's not as stellar as you want it to be the people are maybe saving their money and going to on, on another day but i thought the lineup was pretty decent i wasn't too uh bummed out on it at all to be honest um so by the time I arrived there, the zero was there, and again it was not as busy as I attempted attempted it to be. But you know, all in all, so a good experience of obviously walking through, handing in your coat to the cloak room. Um, I think when I when I got checked for security, uh, one of the ladies told me to calm down because I was like stupid giddy, spreading my arms out like a starfish, thinking I was going through an airport terminal. She's like, "Look, relax. This isn't an airport. Just empty your stuff and put it into the little tray. <laughs> You'll be all right, okay?" <laughs> so I laughed at me. It was quite funny. Um, then I went through, got my wristband, obviously, which I've kept on for you guys. So I wanted to show that I've actually been. Right? So this is the wristband for the time that I went. Hopefully, you can see it here up here on the screen. Um, I'm going to cut this off after I finish this set because, you know, after I finish this episode, because it's a bit ridiculous. But walk in, you obviously hear the fud, fud, fud. You see loads of people wearing mad clothes, obviously, loads of club kids, girls in like thongs and tights and guys in like amazing jock straps and massive boots and just create styles all over the place it's great club wear <clears throat> again it's, it's just a reminder of how 
experimental people can be when they go out sometimes it's not the usual you know skinny jeans and tight t-shirts and harajas that you see here in london but you know you, we can't compare everything to berlin we all have our different gifts you walk up the stairs you just keep hearing the boom 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 it's just it's just like i don't know it just sends a tingle up your spine you go up it's completely dark and the main Berghain main floor you can't even see the dj pass all the bodies that are dancing in front of you the smoke machines going up the person that's doing the lighting at the top is you know having a whirl of a time you go up the stairs to panorama bar it's a completely different feel it's mostly disco mostly house um a really stark contrast and i think i think i realized it more so this time around because i was a lot i was more i was probably the most sober i've been going to the Berghain than, yeah in, in previous times other times I've kind of gone there and I've been, you know, already quite waved. But this time I think I probably had, what, let me say a couple of beers in me, if that. Um, plus I was spending most of my time outside talking to people in the copy and stuff. So, you know, the kind of whatever drunkenness I've had kind of warmed off a bit, wore, wore off a bit with the cold and stuff. So by the time I arrived, I was fairly sober. So I did get more of an understanding of, um, or I did get more of a feel of the room. And I did feel the contrast a lot more. I was like, oh, wow, okay, this is really, really different. Um, even the crowd in Panama Bar completely different. Like you saw a lot more girls in dressed up clothes. I saw a lot more like I don't know non-black clothes. I saw a lot more twirly dancing. A lot more smiley faces. Like it's just a completely different feel to the bottom bit. So which is quite cool. Which means that if you do go, don't assume that you're gonna not get in because you're not wearing all black or because you're not you know have an angry face or you don't speak German. Because for the most part, Panama Bar is like your quintessential you know house night that you'd go to in one of your main metropolitan kind of club night cities that you go to right people will get a bit dressed up you might have some nice boots on some nice fed pants you tag your shirt in you might have a couple of buttons and i'm done a little gold medallion and you just like skanking so that's pretty good i think you'll be fair enough you'll be all right to get into i think if you were, if you were like um let's say heady slimena slp i say no paris kind of outfit i think you'd get in pretty well at Bergen without no without no hassle I think the idea that it's all just going head to toe is a bit outdated, I think. I don't think that's really the good estimation of it. Again, both rooms cater different crowds, so I think that works pretty well. And then, yeah, so I think for the most part, who was in there? Let me look at the list again. So when I went up there, Tamasoma was playing, Tamasuma, sorry. Um, then obviously it was Paramida and then Soundstream when I just about had left, I think. And Sean J. Wright, Octa Octa and RSG back to back was just an absolute banger. And yeah, just um, a really um, amazing night for the most part. Um, I can't really speak of it any highly, um, to be honest. Uh, you get the, you get your wristband, you can come back after after a couple of while, uh, after a few minutes um, or a few hours, sorry, you can go home, rest up, shower, change, come back and you'll be all right. I took a change of clothes in my bag and I changed halfway through and I thought I got a bit too sweaty. Um, just in general, a great experience and, you know, something that I would kind of do going forward. But I think now with the experience I have of kind of being there a few times and obviously hopefully going back there for the May Day festivities, I think the next plan is to, if I do end up going again, <clears throat> is to maybe just not even take a day off on the Friday and just do the Monday off. So you just kind of fly out on the Saturday. You kind of go to a random bar somewhere, hang out, go there on the Saturday morning, on the Sunday morning, sorry then go and leave there on the Monday and then kind of fly out straight away in the first flight out from Bergheim. That would be a pretty cool way to kind of end the day, I think, in that respect. So, um, yeah, all in all, great time. Enjoyed everything. Um, Great crowd. Everyone was chilled. Met loads of British people in there, which was quite cool to see. Loads of Brits celebrating, having a good time, just enjoying themselves in there. And I think we, um, we're we probably the best crowd in there, I've got to say, the Brits, because we we appreciate the fact that we don't really have anything that comes close to it in our hometown or home country. So we really, really kind of enjoy the, the fact that we got in, the fact that people <laughs> kind of let us party in there and we don't take the piss. Um, I think for some for some reason, or for a good reason, actually, the, the kind of native Berlin is sort of like take ownership of the place and they're the ones that are kind of stewarding it and, you know, making sure everyone's on point and no one's doing anything stupid, which is quite cool to see. But I think for the most part, the Brits are the ones that are like, just like starry eyed. Like I was like, oh my God, this is so sick. Look, I'm in here, I'm in here, I'm in here, I'm in here. So that was cool to see. And yeah, just in general, a great crowd. I enjoyed everything about it. And again, I can't wait to go back again, man. So one of my favorite places to go, without a shadow of a doubt, one of my favorite places to go, man.